Never before had I seen an entire community be split by something as simple as a change in text colour. The original tetralogy of Five Nights at Freddy's excels in telling a cohesive and certainly complex story hidden behind surprisingly simple clues. And while this sparked a whole new era of indie horror games and fan games with deeper lore, it also happened to be a big contention point of the whole series, causing the fanbase to religiously clutch onto their beliefs and, as a result, curse itself with a cloud of toxicity. And welcome to GT Live! Young, it's uniting young and old theorists, let's players, like this game has truly just, it, it, it is a phenomenon. And so, thank you, Scott, for creating this. Thank you for being such an active participant. Thank you to Doco on screen right now. You see, uh, well Scott Cawthon created most FNAF games to expand upon the lore and elaborate on the story, while also ensuring there are always more questions to answer and more theory discussions to be made. But at times, more clarification was certainly needed by him that we just never got. When FNAF 4 was released, he specifically said there were no random easter eggs. This threw the community for a loop. Years later from this, people would still be using the same phrase to fit their beliefs. I've been asked this question before, but I never really knew how to answer it. If you could ask Scott Cawthon one question, what would it be? I think my question would concern how deep we as theorists should be looking into this multimedia franchise. Does it matter that we have multiple Jeremys who are all related to missing faces? Or is that just a joke, not to be taken seriously? Is it important to consider that the one you should not have killed has he him pronouns, even though the voice actor description stated he should not have an immediately clear gender? Are we even able to use that as evidence? It's unclear. The entirety of Five Nights at Freddy's is foggy in speculation, which is why I don't think that the lore is ever going to be solved without direct help from Scott himself. But today I want to look at the one line in the franchise that completely blew everything out of the water. A line from FNAF 4, the game that has no random easter eggs and provided a lot more world building and history. You're broken. We are still your friends. I will put you back together. This is a scene showing the crying child in a figurative limbo, perhaps a coma, with his plushies that he called his friends disappearing right in front of his eyes. But that is not the full story. This line appears again and again as it carries a central theme of the series, which is repairing something that is simply irreparable. Animating inanimate objects, Reversing death, tragedy, sorrows. Attempting to put back together something that will forever be broken. We hear a flatline from the crying child's heart monitor, and it signifies anything but death in this series, as we become aware that the soul, agony, and memories continue to flourish in nature. But the reason this final set of dialogue was so highly debated in the community when the game was released is because the text colour of Fredbear had changed from a saturated golden yellow hue in the other cutscenes to a lighter ivory colour in the final one. They look pretty similar, but you can actually go ahead and check for yourself. The original text colour is FFFF57, while the new one is FFFFA0. Throughout the entire game, the text colours had been consistent. Michael's text colour is 787878, and in this same final cutscene, this shows that he was the one who said he was sorry. So if anything, this change in text colour meant that something else changed. Someone else was speaking through the Fredbear plush. This caused chaos in the FNAF community. Who was talking to the crying child? Who would be putting him back together? What does that even mean for him? Over the years, I've heard multiple candidates, and for multiple reasons too. The character encyclopedia suggests that it's just the Fredbear plush. This could be a mistake on Scott's part, maybe he accidentally used a different hex code for the final cutscene. 
Or maybe there's something deeper behind the Fredbear plush. Could the puppet be behind the Fredbear plush? The one that gives gifts and gives life, puts things back together. But how would that even work? Is Charlotte even dead yet? Probably not, which is why a lot of people prefer to believe that William is the one behind this text. Sister Location shows us that the Fredbear plushies are cameras equipped with walkie-talkies to spy on the child. But even then, what are the ramifications from that? Does he act upon it? Does he rebuild him as a robot? Are there crying child Charlie bots? Okay, clearly there's a lot going on here. It's no wonder this set of dialogue completely broke the internet. Since then, there have indeed been more instances of changes in dialogue colour. One that comes straight to mind is the text at the end of the Fruity Maze minigame. What first seems like one speaker actually has two very different colours of text. It also feels quite reminiscent of the recent Therapist CDs in Security Breach. It sounds like a therapy session for one person until you piece together that there are actually two separate people getting therapy here. It does all seem to be something important, an aspect of the game we should be looking into and thinking about. So what does it mean? Well, while I want to let you all theorise for yourselves who said that line and how that impacts the story, I do want to finally dive into why this is one of the most important lines in the franchise. Previously, I did mention that this line has reappeared. One of Nightmare Fredbear's lines in Ultimate Custom Night is Let me put you back together and take you apart all over again. Maybe some insight saying that William truly was the one that said it. They thought I was you. <laughs> and I found her. I put her back together. Just like you asked me to. And of course, what's in the box? It's the pieces put together. There seems to be a lot of parallels running through all of this, all orbiting around the idea of broken pieces that need to be put back together. Because realistically, this all is the story of a fractured family that could never be put back together. The box will never be opened. As I discussed in my last video essay, FNAF 6 has this similar theme of bringing the series together, and gathering everything up in one place is the only way the story can truly be concluded. Candy Cadet talks about five things going into one, much like Ennard being a combination of the original fun times, or Pork Patch being an amalgamation of the mediocre melodies. But all of this was a broken promise. Save him. You can't. Save them. You can't. Put the broken pieces back together. You can't. It's impossible. Everything is broken. The crying child's death and this broken promise is likely what began this entire continuity that we see in the games. The only true way you can put the crying child back together is by giving him his happiest day. Put the pieces in place for him through the FNAF World and FNAF 3 minigames and he can finally be full. But the line I will put you back together is genuinely one of my favourite lines in the series. It is symbolic of a lot of the series, as I say, it is one of the core themes. And William may have said that to the crying child, but it turns out that putting the pieces back together and help wanted made it possible for him to come back. But it's also just a really creepy line to end off with in general. Putting him back together implies he was together in the first place. I wouldn't really say that's true. He was constantly unhappy. He saw something that tormented him. He was teased and killed by his own brother. The crying child was already living in a nightmare. So is it even possible to put something together when it had always been broken? Welcome to the story of Five Nights at Freddy's, everyone. Yeah, I didn't exactly expect for this video to get philosophical, but I do just really like the dialogue here. There isn't much else to talk about, so yeah, this is a shorter video than normal. But I do hope you enjoyed it, and that you'll subscribe for more content in the future. Who do you think said the line that broke Five Nights at Freddy's? Let me know in the comments, and I'll be sure to hit... And I'll be sure to heart your theories. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.